Not sure how to do keyword research? Don't worry, we've got you covered. In this video, you'll learn exactly how to do keyword research to make sure that your website is fully optimized for the search results. Hey, it's Emily here from Fat Joe, where we offer SEO services designed for agencies and marketing teams. Well, keywords are words or phrases that users type into the search results to find the content that they want. Keyword research is about understanding which words or phrases users are searching when looking for your products, services, or content. Building your content around carefully researched keywords will ensure that you're providing the best possible information for your target audience. This will increase relevant traffic and ultimately conversions. There are three key things that make a good keyword. Relevance, authority, and search volume. The keywords that you've chosen from your keyword research need to serve a purpose by ensuring that you can create relevant and valuable information for your target audience. If your content is the best at meeting users' needs, then you will rank number one for that search query. You'll also need to prove to Google that you're an authority for that chosen subject or niche. Creating helpful in-depth content which appears all over your website will do this. Search volume is possibly the most obvious of elements that make a good keyword. This is because you want to make sure that people are actually searching for it. Now this is where it gets interesting because targeting a generic keyword with a really large search volume is great if you're going to actually be able to rank for it. We'll get into that a little later on. So let's get into exactly how to find keywords. Start by answering this. Which topics do you actually want to rank for? Start by brainstorming words or phrases that are related to your business. These should be revolved around your goals and include anything that relates to your content, services, website, brand, anything that you want to promote. At this point, the idea is to focus on general topics as opposed to worrying too much about specific keywords or user search intent. We're simply drawing a starting line. For example, a yoga instructor might start with yoga, fitness classes, or well-being classes. Once you've decided on your general topics, you'll need to expand your list of keywords even further so that you can find those gems that you'll want to use within your SEO strategy. To do this, plug your topics into a keyword generator tool. Here we've entered Yoga Instructor into Google Ads Keyword Planner, and it's generated other keyword ideas such as yoga teacher and yoga trainer. Here's another example using the paid keyword research tool we use called Ahrefs. You can enter the keyword into the Keywords Explorer and it'll suggest related search phrases. You can even pinch keywords from Google's suggested search. Or you can use the questions from People Also Ask. Expand your list by adding all the keywords that you feel are relevant to your products, services and content. Now that you have your list, we'll look at how you'll refine your keywords. The list you've just generated will contain two categories. Those keywords that relate to your target audience and those that don't. So for our hypothetical yoga business, keywords that are relevant might include yoga classes near me, yoga for beginners, or yoga for kids. And then on the other end of the scale, you'll have keywords that aren't so relevant, such as international yoga day, yoga mat, and yoga facts. Now that doesn't mean that you can't target these, it all depends on your goals, but it's a technique that you can use to help you refine your keywords and narrow down your options. So how do you know if a keyword is relevant to your target audience? By understanding user search intent. User search intent is the goal a user has when typing keywords into the search bar. By understanding user search intent, you can ensure that you're creating content that directly answers those searches queries in full detail. There are four types of search queries that can help you understand user search intent. Navigational, informational, transactional, and local. Navigational search intent refers to the searches that indicate a user knows exactly where they want to go, they just need Google to take them there. These are mostly branded queries and are really hard to optimize for if you don't own that specific domain. That's because you're going to be outranked by whoever does. The only real way to optimize for your own branded search queries is by building brand awareness. Users searching with informational intent are looking to expand their knowledge and learn more about a particular topic. Businesses sometimes ignore keywords with this type of intent because they don't think it will lead to a sale. However, informational searches can kickstart the buying cycle, increase brand awareness, and get users interested in your products or services. Transactional search intent indicates that the user is close to purchase. These keywords include buy, sale, discount, or order. 
Keywords that indicate the user's intent to interact with the brand also fall under the transactional category. This includes keywords such as sign up, subscribe or trial. Targeting transactional keywords is a great strategy for businesses wanting to grow their pool of leads or for bloggers who are looking to grow their online community. Lastly, local intent keywords indicate the users want to find products and services available nearby. The search terms will include a local identifier such as near me or the location of the user. With searches for near me growing massively year on year, this is a fantastic opportunity for local businesses to start optimizing for keywords in this category. We've got an in-depth guide on how to optimize for local searches, which I'll link down below. Now let's talk about long tail keywords. Long tail keywords are incredibly effective. Figures show that the average conversion rate for a long tail keyword is a whopping 36%. Let's dispel a little myth here though. The term long tail doesn't necessarily refer to the length of the phrase. It's a common confusion for obvious reasons, but instead it refers to the specific or niche search phrases with a low difficulty score. Long tail keywords make up around 70% of all searches on Google and are often easier to rank for. So you may find that targeting numerous long tail keywords will generate the same, if not more traffic than targeting those C keywords we spoke about earlier and the traffic will be more valuable. So win-win. Aside from user search intent, how else do you know which keywords to target? Well, this is where metrics comes into play. There are six things you should focus on. Keyword difficulty, search volume, cost per click, organic clicks, SERP features, and the current SERP results. SERP being the search engine results pages. Keyword difficulty simply refers to how hard it is for you to rank for that particular keyword. The higher the difficulty, the harder it is to rank. The keyword difficulty can be assessed manually and for free by using the Moz bar and looking at the page authority, the number of backlinks and the domain authority. However, if you have access to Ahrefs, we highly recommend using this tool because it will take all of those factors and turn that into one simple keyword difficulty score. Head to the Keyword Explorer, enter your keyword and press the search icon. Once loaded, you'll see a variety of metrics for that particular keyword, the first being the keyword difficulty score. The search volume tells you how many times people search for a specific keyword in any given month. Of course, keywords with a high search volume are worth targeting for obvious reasons, but some high volume keywords have such a high difficulty score that it would be almost impossible for you to compete. Thinking about our yoga business and looking at Ahrefs Keyword Explorer again, we can see that yoga has an impressive search volume of nearly 200,000. However, the keyword difficulty is classed as super hard at 92 out of 100. Yoga Instructor, on the other hand, has a much lower search volume in comparison, but it's a more relevant search term to our business, still has a very good monthly search volume of nearly 3,000 and a very low difficulty score of 19, making it a much better option to target in this case. If you don't have access to a pay tool, this is where you can use Google's free keyword planner and this tool shows you a range indicating the search volumes. Cost per click is a metric that advertisers use to measure the cost of ads. For every time a user clicks on an ad in the search results, it charges that advertiser. However, it's also useful if you want to assess the value of a keyword. That's because companies will pay more to sit alongside the most lucrative keywords. A high cost per click will indicate a good keyword to target organically. The main reason you want to rank at the top of Google is that you can generate more traffic to your website, right? So this is why checking the number of clicks that a keyword generates is so important. So let's head back to the Google Keyword Planner. Simply head to Keywords in the menu on the left and type in your keyword. The higher the number, the more clicks your website will receive at the top of the search results. Google receives more than 3.5 billion searches a day, but not every user is clicking through to a website. They're stopping at the results pages. This is mostly as a result of the increased appearance of SERP features. SERP features are essentially pockets of information that sit alongside the regular URLs in the search results. They often provide the information that the searcher needs right there within the search results, so there's no need for them to click through to the website but they do increase brand awareness. And there's also the opportunity that the user might click through to your website to find out more. Finding the SERP features that appear for your chosen keyword is simple. To do this, you can type the keyword into the search results and scroll through, or you can use Ahrefs for an easier and quicker way to do this. Let's pop back into the Keyword Explorer and enter our keyword. 
you'll see a column labelled SF for SERP features. Hovering over this will reveal the SERP features present for that keyword, ripe and ready for you to target. And lastly, you'll want to be checking on the actual websites and web pages that are currently ranking in the search results for your chosen keywords. This process shows you which competitors are ranking highly for your keywords and why. Your goal should be to identify the way in which they're using their keywords to get to the top of the search results. From here, you can plug any gaps between what they're doing and what you're doing. One last thing, keyword stuffing. Don't do it. Don't just shove keywords absolutely everywhere. Not only does it not work, but it's terrible for the user experience. Adding keywords in all the right places will ensure that your content stays on theme, answers all your users' queries, and is easily read by Google Spiders. And that's it. You should now know what makes a good keyword, how to find keywords, and how to analyze them. If you would like even more detail on how to do keyword research, you can check out the guide on our website, which I've linked below in the description. Make sure to like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more SEO tips.